You are once again looking at a live view of the Space Telescope Operations Control Center at NASA's Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. The fifth of the five planned spacewalks for the STS-125 mission was completed earlier today with astronauts John Grunsfeld and Drew Feustel performing a trio of tasks designed to extend Hubble's operating life. We spoke with Mission Operations Manager Keith Wallius after his team had concluded their shift to get his reaction to both today's activities as well as the upcoming big event on Tuesday morning when a shuttle crew will say goodbye to the telescope for the final time. So today was our flight day eight. It was our EVA-5, the final spacewalk of the mission. So we had a couple things we still had to accomplish. We had to put in our new batteries. We put in the first three batteries early in the mission, and now we had three more to go. And again, these are replacing batteries that are 19 years old, so they've been running down. They've been working fine, but they're 19 year old batteries, so you want new ones in. We had to get that task accomplished. We also had one of our fine guidance sensors, and this gives us the incredible pointing capability. Now, these aren't small cameras. These are about the size of a grand piano, weigh about 900 pounds. So we had that task. And there's one task we didn't get done yesterday. We need to put these layers, this uh, metal layer, stainless steel layer on the outside of the telescope. A space is a very damaging environment and it's been really ripping apart some of the insulation on our critical electronics phase. So we had three yet that we wanted to do, one from yesterday and two more today. So those were the tasks. Happy to say that every single thing got done and the spacecraft is in fantastic shape. Well, right now we have a couple more tasks that we still have to accomplish this day. Every day we do what we call an aliveness test and a functional test. An aliveness test to make sure that something just turns on, and then a functional test to make sure it really works as we intend for the long haul. So right now we're doing a functional test on the batteries. Everything so far looks great, but it's a more in-depth test that we do after the crew's in for the night. Then after that we're going to do the functional test on a fine guidance sensor. Pretty much the same thing, just make sure that it's working fine for the long term. And that's going to take about an hour, it's not a short test. So we have to finish up those tasks tonight, and then we got to get ready for tomorrow, the big day when they're going to release us. One of the things that we have to do overnight is charge up those batteries. Even though the batteries are in, they're not all charged up yet. And before we get released from the order, orbiter, we want the batteries at their full capacity. So overnight, they're going to charge the batteries. And then when the crew wakes up tomorrow, it's just a series of activities getting ready. Before they grapple with us, we have to turn off some critical electronics. Then they're going to get the arm. It's going to go and grab HST again and hold it out. It's going to hold out HST. And when the time is right, when exactly the right orientation, they're going to let us go. And they're going to do some burns, and then they're going to go away from us, and we're a free-flying telescope again. But we're still busy. Our telescope is there, but we have to commission it. We have to start bringing it up again, turn those electronics on, make sure we're pointing in the right direction, make sure that our batteries are charging exactly as we want it to. So we have a series of activities. After we get released, there's still at least two or three hours of very intense commanding we have to do to get ourselves for a state where we can last for a little bit longer. And then over actually the next four, five, six months, we're going to be testing out all these new toys, these wonderful new instruments that we have on board, and making sure they work right. So it's going to be about five or six months before everything is back completely to normal again. Remember, take a moment here. This is it, the last space walk on Hubble, and uh, maybe our last visit uh, to space. So enjoy this. Uh, you earned it. The general mood is nothing short of euphoric. I mean, it's just amazing. You think where we were five days ago, and Hubble was still doing great. But now we have four brand new instruments, and just not just new instruments, incredible instruments. The two that we fixed up, they were older, but they were fantastic, and some of our best pictures have come from them, best discoveries. These two new ones are even another generation beyond that. It's just fantastic. And then just the engineering side of how well this, your car runs, how well our telescope runs. We have new batteries. We have new gyros. We have this new insulation outside. We have a new pointing system. It's fantastic. Euphoria, best way to describe it. Here we are. We've been working literally for seven years to get this thing done since the last servicing mission. And there's been ups and downs and trials and tribulations. It's been a roller coaster of emotion in the seven years leading up. And then it's been a roller coaster of emotions during this mission. We've had problems. We've overcome the problems. We have more problems. We've overcome those problems. And everything's been done. So it's a, it's a relief. You know, there's this huge weight off our shoulders. It's wonderful because we've been part of this history. Of, of making the telescope something that it's even better than it was before. So it's relief, it's excitement, it's euphoria, it's fatigue. It's about 35 other emotions I can't describe right now.
So after almost 40 hours of spacewalks over five days, the Hubble Space Telescope, for the first time since it was deployed, has a full complement of science instruments. While activities here in the stock in support of the telescope and the space shuttle are in their final hours, the science mission orbital verification work involving detailed checkouts, alignments, and focusing of the new instruments is expected to take several months. Hubble scientists expect the first new images to be released in September. After more than 104,225 orbits since the telescope first rode into space in Space Shuttle Discovery's payload bay, Hubble stands poised to provide incredible images and new discoveries of our universe as it continues its journey of exploration. We will now return to Mission Control in Houston for continuing NASA TV coverage of the flight of Atlantis. Up next on NASA TV will be the first airing of the Flight Day 8 Highlights video package.